This was an amazing, amazing story. It's widely known in the Arab countries because this imam is apparently widely known. I don't know him personally. But the, when imams narrate this, they always say one of our colleagues who's on Egyptian, he's very popular in Egypt, and they tell the story. There was a man, an imam in Egypt. He's a very popular imam. And he privately told this story to people, that he had a flight uh, at uh, very early in the morning, 6 a.m. flight, which means he got to be in the airport um, around that time, a little bit before 6 a.m. Okay. So he, he's far away. He's like three hours away. So he calls up his friend, and he, his, another sheikh, he says, I know your masjid is literally right next to the airport. Le, uh, can you keep the door open for me? I'll go in and I'll sleep in the masjid. I'll pray Fajr right away, and then I'll go, and I'll be very close to the airport. So he said, fine, no problem. So he tells the people, leave the door open for the sheikh and leave a light on. So most masjid in Egypt, they close after Aisha. But this man, he left the masjid, the door open. And the servant, they left the door, or the worker in the mosque left the door ajar, right? Meaning open a little bit of the mosque. So uh, the sheikh, he has his dinner, he packs up his bags, and he drives all the way up, or he takes a cab all the way up, and then he takes the, and he arrives at, uh, at the masjid. When he goes to the masjid, all the lights are off except for one light in the front of the mosque. And he puts his bags down, and he hears like weeping, crying. And then he goes up and he sees a regular man sitting right in front of the mihrab saying, Oh Allah, I don't have anybody else. The operation's tomorrow. I need this money. I have nothing. And he's crying and crying and crying and he's making dua and he's sometimes lifting his hands up like this and sometimes crying and, and, and talking in common Egyptian language saying, there's nobody else. My mother didn't have anything. My brothers don't have anything. Nobody wants to lend me anything. And my wife has to do this surgery. And he's crying and he's making this dua. Then he hears the imam come in. So he stops and he gets up to leave. Right? And the imam, he says, what is this dua that you're praying? Subhanallah, you like you broke my heart just hearing you. And he's weeping. So the man, he cleans his face. He's he's he's. A gr like an adult like he's not some youth he's an adult and uh he's an older man and he says uh, my wife has a surgery tomorrow it's a necessary surgery we keep delaying it because we don't have the money and i went i spent all night going to look out tr trying to get loans from everybody trying to patch together five thousand from you two thousand from you nobody would give me a loan because his job isn't really strong enough they don't think they're going to get paid back. Nobody would give him a loan. He said, then on the way home, I saw the masjid open, the door of the mosque. I said, okay, maybe I'm, this is for me to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I came in and I began to ask my Lord. He said, how much do you need? So the man says, I need 15,400 pounds. 15,400 pounds. So he said, well, I don't have that kind of money, but I will leave you to go back to the one who is going to answer you. So the man goes back and he spends the rest of the night all in dua until Fajr and the imam sleeps on the side. When everyone starts coming in for Salat al-Fajr and the adhan goes off and the sheikh of the mosque comes in, he insists that uh, his guest lead the prayer. So he leads the prayer. Now in this, in this masjid, the prayer is actually, uh, there's a little loudspeaker. So it, the apartment building next door can all hear the prayer. And he's a famous imam. So he's praying. And he, f he prays a long prayer because Fajr, he should be a pretty long prayer to make sure that people would come down. He turns around after the salah and he sees a man get up right away and start a approaching him. That man looks like a very rich guy, like with a scarf, polished, really clean looking guy. And he's smiling and he's so happy. He's like, I watch you every day on TV. And we listened to your Qur'an. And I couldn't believe that uh, you're reciting in our masjid. He said, yeah, it was a coincidence that subhanAllah that uh, I had to take an airport, uh, a flight 
and this masjid is right next to the airport, so I spent the night here in the masjid, and he made me pray, so that's why I'm here. He then says that, like, what, what can I do for you, right? And he, sa- he just talks about himself. I own factories. Anything you need, you have any. And you know, most mashayikh, they have these initiatives. They got initiative. They feed the poor. They have students. He said, whatever you need. Your students need money. Your institution needs money. You just tell me what you need. So he said, no, everything's good, alhamdulillah, but thank you so much, and, and we'll, you know, we keep, we'll keep in touch. As the man is leaving, he remembers the other man. He said, oh, wait, hold on, hold on a second. He said, uh, I do have a need for you. There is somebody, I came today, I found him praying, weep, crying his eyes out. He needs money. He said, oh, okay, well, subhanAllah, my wife, just today, as I was coming down, she had... Uh, 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 compiled the zakah and she said unload the zakah because we don't want the zakah in our house unload it all today so i have a bag of zakah he said okay good how much is it so he says it's fifteen thousand four hundred pounds now the sheikh at this time he can't believe what he's seeing and he his eyes start to well up and he starts to just he's in shock he calls he looks for the man he's like oh i hope the man didn't leave he finally founds the poor man he says, come, come, quick. And then he says, in front of the rich man, he says to the poor man, tell me, uh, what happened tonight? He said, well, as you know, I was looking for these loans. I couldn't get a loan. My wife's surgery is today at 9 a.m. And I saw the masjid door open. I came in, and I just begged to Allah for help. He said, how much do you need? He said, as I told you, 15,400 pounds. Now the rich man began to, to weep. He couldn't believe what he's hearing. Right, And he's like, this zakah had been piling up because I wanted to give it to one person who was in dire need. Allah's my witness. Every He says, every year we give the zakat out as it comes in. Like whatever money we just give out envelopes to the people downstairs. And he said, this time around, I wanted to give out the zakah uh, to one person who was in dire need. So I kept compiling it up in, in, in a drawer. And this time around, this morning, my wife said, if you're going to go out, take this money with you. I don't want this much money in the house as zakah. It's, it's not, it has to be given out. So she made me take it today. And I usually, he just like, I usually don't pray in the masjid. But when I heard your recitation, I wanted to come and meet you myself. That's why I'm here. So he said, subhanAllah, this man, Allah has driven three people. He drove him, the imam himself, made him to come to the mosque and spend the night there. The rich man, to hear the recitation, come down to the mosque, and the wife of the rich man, to, to something moved inside of her that she does not want the zakat anymore. Right? She doesn't want the zakat in the house anymore. Unload it today. All three of them were crying, right? and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. They're seeing the ijabah of Allah right in front of them. And now the entire masjid is watching at this point. And the poor man, he just breaks out. And he starts saying, My Lord, I love you. I love you. And he starts screaming. He has the money in his hand now. He's like, I love you. Uh, and he starts, he's losing his mind. But that's what it's like when Allah Ta'ala answers somebody. It's literally, people say, why don't we see miracles? We do all, all the time, right? This stuff is, happens all the time if you got your eyes open and you're e- either yourself or in a person in du'a you're a person of du'a, or you know people who are people of du'a. And when we say du'a, it has to be, there is really no difference between emotion. Spirituality and emotion cannot be separated. You could be an emotional person, but not, it has nothing to do with spirituality or deen. But you cannot possibly be a spiritual person and have nothing to do with emotion. That's the difference. You could be an emotional person, it has nothing to do with, with, with Islam or Deen. But you, the other way it can't be. And the stronger the emotion in the dua, meaning the desperation, the need, the desire, and the brokenness, the faster the ijabah. And I've heard some of the awliya say, one tear does the job with Allah subhanahu wa That's his mercy. His compassion is that one tear will do the job. Subhanallah.